We see it right there, folks. This is war in real time unfolding moment by moment. Let's bring in our panel now to discuss some of the action we're seeing on the ground and also in the air and bring in former senior naval intelligence officer John Jordan, who's also a board member at the overseers of Stanford University's Hoover Institute and former intelligence analyst for the U.S. Marine Corps, Kate Monroe. She's also a congressional candidate in California. Welcome to you both. Obviously very dramatic, very dangerous as well. John, I'll get your reaction first to what we just saw with it being uh, no warning for people in Israel there and what Hamas is up to this evening. What do you take from John Huddy's extensive report there? Well, uh, certainly John talked about the no warning, the short flight time between Gaza and some of those settlements in Israel. Uh, it's less time for an intercept and less time for people to take cover. Um, Hamas is is uh, being surrounded and is under enormous military pressure, and they're feeling it. Uh, what we're watching now is to see is Hezbollah, whether they jump in from the north, Bianca. I mean, the Russians recently reported that they are um, either through Wagner or through the government, be deploying SA-22 surface-to-air missile systems and giving those to Hezbollah, which would represent a widening of the axis of uh, evil, so to speak, yes. um, and, it, and certainly an escalation regionally. So, yeah, it's dangerous times, but the, the fighting is uh, it's almost a culmination there in Gaza. Uh, Kate, your read on this, uh, does it mean that the IDF is making some significant headway, too, that Hamas continues to attack because they are, they're being pushed back and they are uh, on the defensive now? I've, I've heard reports that they've come in from the north, sort of where John is, but the IDF also almost trying to split Israel in two with how they are handling this ground offensive. No, I do. I mean, I, like I think Gaza, it's very interesting is, yeah. you put that much... Yeah, you put that much pressure on them, things like this are going to happen. But I think, you know, more importantly, we're talking about the potential of doing a ceasefire. You don't do a ceasefire when you have momentum. You know, right now, you know, we're putting a lot of pressure on them, which is why they're, you know, trying to fire back in the way that we are. But we cannot do a ceasefire when you're thinking that, you know, Hezbollah may join the fight and ring around Israel. They need to keep pressing on. Certainly, we need to discuss some humanitarian aid, but I think that we need to press forward because once you lose traction, and lose momentum, very difficult to get it back. And the aid continue, it continues to be discussed. Uh, real quickly, last question, John, to you. They're talking about fuel. It sounds like Hamas has plenty of fuel. Look at all the uh, fire and rockets they continued to throw over towards Israel. Yeah, I mean, Hamas is always going to take the lion's share of whatever so-called humanitarian supplies go in, that there's no way to guarantee that they won't be gotten. Fuel has military significance, and so Hamas will certainly seize that. I agree with Kate. You know, the most what you're going to have here is going to have more casualties if there's a ceasefire. Hamas will take advantage of that, as will Hezbollah. So once you start something like this, you best finish it as quickly as possible. Let's see if... Uh... This, the talks this weekend will uh, progress between Netanyahu and Blinken as well towards that uh, shared goal, I guess. John and Kate, thank you so much for your analysis. Appreciate it.